Yeah. Welcome everybody to Mom Street USA. My name is Kate, aka the Disney Cicerone, and this is my co-host Jackie, aka Wishes mm -hmm. Mama. We are so excited tonight to bring you a very uh, special episode that is kind of a, a little bit different than what we usually do. We do usually get down into the nitty gritty details of all the things, and there might be a little bit of that too. But we are going to do a more like step back, ten thousand foot view of how do you plan for a Disney trip? How you know if you're like. I've never done this before or I've done it a couple times, but it's still kind of chaotic and it's stressful. We've got you covered because tonight we're going to just go over this is follow these steps for a great vacation. <laughs> That's the hope, right? That's the plan. <laughs> yeah, we were kind of looking over like what we had talked about previously and what we're getting ready to talk about. We're like, you know, an overview would be really helpful. And a lot of people have said in our, our shows like, OK, I got to like make a list of everything I need to do. We got you. That's what this episode yes. is all about. So um, we're going to go over everything that you need to know, hopefully, that will help you make sure you've got all your little check boxes checked and you'll be good to go. Yeah. Should we show them what we've made for them for yeah, this episode? That would be great. I have, to, I have to make sure that everything's all flipped around the right way. Hold on. Allie says, sigh, I'll go get my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, or... Well. We've got something that we made just for you guys that is our very special Mom Street Disney planning checklist that goes all the way from, you know, about a year out um, mm -hmm. all the way to the day before. So um, all the things that we, um, Jackie and I both thought about this and like the thing we picked the major things that you definitely want to um, keep track of while you're planning um, so that you don't miss anything. And some of them are maybe optional for you personally, but mm -hmm. then you can just cross them off. You already done. So yep. easy peasy. So we also made that available for you guys to grab. So link in my bio, um, you will be able to find it. It's the first thing on there. It will direct you to my Etsy shop and you can find it there. Um, so if you are like, yes, yes, I need that. I'm planning a trip. Please help me. You can find it there. <laughs> it is it's ready it's free, for you. Right? Oh, free. I need to, um, let me Figure do that, that because yes, I had, <laughs> well, I was fighting with Etsy earlier. So okay. let me, who doesn't fight with Etsy? I really? know. <laughs> let me double check because it, it wasn't letting me make it free, which was irritating. Gotcha. Um, so don't in any case purchase it make, <laughs> let me make sure it's free yeah. before you download it so yes <laughs> <laughs> so um while she's figuring that out i'm, I'm gonna just dive right into Perfect. um the nine to twelve month park and i'll talk a little bit about one of the things that's on this list is um booking a resort but specifically booking a resort if you're going to rent dvc now you can rent dvc Points. We've talked about this before in our resorts episodes. I think it was the um, deluxe episode, the first deluxe episode that we talked about this, how to rent DVC points. If you're going to do this, you want to try to do it as far out in advance, especially if you want some of the more highly coveted ones. I know like California, um, Grand Californian is one of those that like you really got to hit it early or it's kind of a toss up whether or not a reservation will open for you. So if you know you want to stay somewhere very specific, you'll want to book your DVC as like, it's the 11 months is when it opens up um, to be able to rent something. So, um, but you can rent something later. So just keep in mind with this checklist, some of these things like you can do them at other times for some of the items. This one, you might still be able to get like Saratoga Springs is open. Gosh, there's reservations for that all the way up till probably like a month before, if not closer, because it's just like there's a ton of rooms and it's not as popular as the other ones. So if you're not as picky about where you stay, you don't have to plan that far in advance. But <laughs> if you want your dream vacation, you want to rent your dream place, I would suggest um, starting that nine to 12 month part. Um, mark, sorry, not part. Um, <laughs> another thing you can do, I'm just... I'm buying you time, Jackie. <laughs> no, you're good. So I figured okay. it out. However, Etsy <laughs> won't let you post something for free. Um, free, free. Yes. So it's yeah. going to be through a coupon code. Um, and Valerie asked about putting it on Discord. So we can, but it, the, the quality will not be great if we have to put that on Discord. So that's why we opted for the download off of Etsy because we thought it would be better for you guys. Um, so promo code MOMSTREET all one word, we'll get it 
for you for free. And we'll post all that in Discord. That way, you, if you guys missed it or you're not sure or you don't have the ability to, like, make note of it right now, we'll make sure that that happens. So, But it should yeah. all be there for you now. They really compress the, the photo quality on Discord. So it's yeah. sad. Sad that they do that, but it, Very it does. <laughs> okay, um, sorry. Yes, continue. <laughs> no, it's okay. So I, that was one at the bottom of the list. But if we go back to the top, um, I think we are going to talk about making a budget maybe yeah. first. Do you want to yeah. chat about that? Yeah, a bit? absolutely. So that is probably the number one most important thing as you are starting this process. Um, you've got to know what budget you're looking at, or you've got to know, okay, I don't really know what I'm looking at budget wise. Um, let me look at some options. So um, the Disney website alone will help you like price compare. Um, so you can save up to three different trips in your cart on the Disney website that you can kind of look at different options if you're looking at different values or moderates or whatever that may be, because that's gonna be your biggest swing. Tickets are gonna be the same price regardless, but it's gonna be that yeah. resort for the most part. Um, yeah, like, like a couple dollars per day yeah. difference maybe. Right. depending on time of year but yes. yeah yeah um but the resort is really going to be your biggest thing when it comes to budget um so getting an idea of that to be able to then look at the different options that you have is going to be your your step one as you're kind of going through this whole whole process yeah um and i mean there's also this is also where you're, if you're feeling overwhelmed about pricing things, it's a, you know, there's always the option of, of going with a travel agent at that point. You'll still have things to do for your trip that you can do that are off this list, even if you do with a travel agent or yeah. a training, a planning, planning, sorry, I can't talk today. A planning consultant <laughs> um, will also, can also help you with that price out trip so that you're just like, have an idea of what to budget. Yeah. If you've never been before. Absolutely. So. And that kind of goes hand in hand with the second thing we've got on our list there, which is researching where to stay. Um, so for those of you who have been with us since the beginning, you know that we did a super deep dive into all of the resorts on Disney World, Disneyland, on property, off property, all of the above. Um, so if that's something that you missed, go back in our archives. They're available on YouTube and on our podcast as well. Links in our bio. Um, but really deciding... Once you know what your budget looks like, where do you want to stay? Um, what is important to you at those resorts? Um, is it important that you've got water slides and other amenities? Because if you know, the values don't have those. You've got to go to the moderate level. So, you know, different things like that can really sway you one way or the other. Yeah, it's a... Um... And and also like staying close to resort, the transportation options. Yeah, like all of those things we did talk all about that like we said we've done the details <laughs> this is the more of the, the back one but just getting an idea of what resorts are available and mm -hmm. um a long time ago back before like you know like i'm old so like you know but back before like i did a lot of research on the internet which you do now i would um get like the touring plans book has like a mm -hmm. um they have a, a great book for um park planning and they do a new one every year and so i would always get that one for the year i was going and i'd read up on all the resorts also another option for you know just get it to book to read or they have a lot of that online now so you can just yeah. go through even the disney's website i wouldn't recommend honestly i'm not a huge fan of disney's actual website for researching things about disney which is mm -hmm. sad but true yeah, yeah you kind of have to know what you're looking for when you go to their site it's not great yeah. to just like click and read and figure stuff out um, you kind of have to know ahead of time, which is why a lot of people that I run into that are planning their trips um, get very overwhelmed by the website and can't find what they're looking for. Even if they're just trying to price out a trip and they know where they want to go, they still have issues because their website is so just massive and it's so yeah. hard to find what you're looking well, for. Even like it has such limited information at the same time. Like you try to go to look for hotels and it's like, here's a couple details about this hotel with like four pictures. And you're like, I yeah. need more information. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, you know, Google sometimes your I, friend. <laughs> Google is a great resource for that because there are a tremendous amount of Disney sites that will cover yeah. hotels really well and do a full walkthroughs of rooms and all the kinds of things you could ever need. So. Yeah. Um, and if you're looking for, that. yeah, if you're looking for those resort episodes from our podcast, um, episode six is value resorts. Episode eight 
is moderate resorts and nine and 10 are deluxe. So if you're looking for those, um, that information about resorts, that's where you can find it. Yeah. And uh, Robbie says, do, you, do we ever use TripAdvisor for reviews? I use TripAdvisor a lot for reviews, especially yeah. for hotels. Um, I'm a big fan of just, not, not for booking per se, but mm -hmm. just the reviews of other travelers and the pictures they yeah. posted. I feel like it's mostly, mostly reliable. So yes, yeah. I, I recommend TripAdvisor, absolutely. Especially yes. if you're staying off property. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. With Disney on property, you know a little bit more kind of what you're, what you're going to get. But yeah, when you go off property... You, I would do a lot of research and yes. a lot of reading with those reviews just to double yes. check and Absolutely. make sure. Yes. So that's re researching where to stay. We won't get too much in the weeds in that one because we got a lot more other things to cover. So, um, so we have make a budget nine to 12 months out. We have make a budget, research where to stay. If you're renting DVC, book your resort. Um, another thing you can do is to look up discounts because there's a lot of discounts that are available and, or that come out. If you, you can even look at mousesavers.com is my favorite place to find. They update it all the time. It looks like a really old website when you go to it. And it kind of is like I haven't <laughs> updated in years, but they do update the information, which is mm -hmm. what's valid. And they even have a record of the previous dates in the previous year that Disney released mm -hmm. like new promotions. So yeah. you can say like, oh, I want a book, but is there a promotion maybe coming up soon? Right. So we don't have exact dates for knowing when that's going to happen necessarily, but you can kind of get an idea of what time of year they do. So researching mm -hmm. what discounts are available to you. Um, is definitely something you want to do that far out so you can save as much as possible. Yeah, and that's kind of one of those that you want to do as you go to. Um, you know, you're going to hear about different discounts that get released kind of throughout the year leading up to your trip, even just a few weeks before you go possibly. Um, so that's definitely something you want to keep an eye on um, with the Disney website. Disney doesn't release them frequently. Um, so yeah. as long as you're checking I don't know. I'd it's say like, like a once, quarterly once almost. A, uh, yeah, I was gonna say once yeah. every four to six weeks, you're probably fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But other than that, you know. And if you follow like virtually, like there's so many people you can follow that will be like breaking news. This is yeah. happening now. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> breaking news. Everything. Is happening. <laughs> all the things. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> If it's all breaking news, is it still breaking news? I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> it's all another discussion for another time. <laughs> what I'm saying is I do follow a lot of those people because I do yeah. appreciate them telling us the breaking news. So I'm not hating on anybody. So just yeah. <laughs> yeah, just be aware of any news sources that you're following. Some are a lot more reliable than others. Um, oh, facts. So yes. be, be aware of clickbaity type articles and headlines and things like that. That's why some place like the discord that we're the majority of us are a part of is a really great place to find information or to ask like, Hey, is this true? Um, yeah. You know, yeah. so that's also a really good thing to keep in mind as you're looking for those deals and discounts and things like that. You want to make sure you're doing research in more than one place. <laughs> Gassy says the most important part of planning is how to pick which years to take. That's, we're getting that's there. True. We're, we're going to get there. Not at nine to 12 months out unless you're really committed to what you're going to wear. But we will get there. Um, so the other thing that is in our nine to 12 month box, um, maybe you can talk about this a little bit, Jackie, is creating a My Disney Experience account. Yes. So that is your end all be all account that you're going to have to have and kind of live and breathe in as you're planning this trip. Um, you will have to set one up when you book, um, even to like go in and like save a cart on the website. If you're trying to do price comparing things like that, um, you're going to have to have that, um, login. Your login will be the same for like the Disney website as it is for the app. Um, once you download that, my Disney experience app on your device. Um, and that's where you're going to find a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about coming up. Um, but you want to make sure that you've got that all logged in password saved. You know what, what, how, how to get into your account that way, um, because yeah. like I said, it's really where you're going to live and breathe as you're planning. Yeah, and it's uh, it's attached to all of your Disney accounts are all connected. Mm -hmm. So Disney Cruise Line, Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Plus, literally all your Disney accounts are yeah. all connected into one thing. So it's it's the same one. Whatever you use for any of those other <laughs> things, you also use for Disney World, Disneyland. Um, yeah. So, so if you've already got a login for one of those. You want to use that if you have not created a My Disney experience and you're getting ready to book, um, because otherwise you'll have to jump through hoops and they'll probably give you error messages and all that fun stuff. 
Um, Mama Joyo is asking um, where can she watch recording of these lives or previous episodes. So we have we have both a podcast if you want to listen to it. That's Mom Street USA. We also have a Mom Street USA uh, YouTube, which is where the videos are posted. So there's a link in our bio. Is I think it's in it's in our Mom Street bio for sure. Maybe yeah. not our personal ones, but I know it's, it's in Mom Street USA. I know it's in mine. <laughs> it's you click I think and you'll find podcast it. is in I think I have okay. a podcast in mine so yeah Perfect. but if you go to if you follow mom street usa then mm -hmm. you can find um all the links to all our stuff there so yeah Perfect. Sorry to jump in there, but um, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Do you have anything else about my Disney experience? Because I think that's all. No, like I said, we'll kind of touch on it as we go and kind of chat about what else you'll need to be doing in that app as we go. Um, but that's kind of your nine to 12 time frame. Uh, make a budget, research where to stay. If you're doing DVC, book your resort, look at the discounts and create that account. So that's kind of in a nutshell around that nine to 12 month or as soon as you book, basically, because I know not everyone books a year out. Um, you know, basically, as soon as you decide what you're doing, you want to make sure all those things are done right away. <laughs> yeah, um, I have one more question over here yeah. on my side. Um, we do we have we accept questions all the time in our discord or you can contact us on social media. Um, but if you do have a question as we're going along here, everybody, please feel free to, to ask a question because even though we're, we have kind of like we're moving through this list, we are more than happy to answer questions as we go. Um, as uh, I'd say as time allows, but like we, we decide when we end this thing. So we'll answer your questions. So feel free, feel free to ask questions. Uh, if it's not directly related to the topic that we're discussing right now, we might wait till we get to that just to answer. We'll write it down and answer it. So um, just so that because we do record this for the podcast, we want to make sure that it, it's not like broken up, but we do want to answer your questions. So please feel free to ask. <laughs> So, oh my gosh, Danielle saying we did three weeks out last year. They planned three weeks out. No time to panic. We had to pack and go. Ooh, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my I've word. done that. It's <laughs> stressful, but you do it. Well, maybe um, if that's you, this list will at least help you make sure you've gotten everything you're like, done did in I that get three week done. period. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can, it can be done, but it's yeah. stressful. And it's some of the things you yeah. might miss or not be able to do as fully as you would if you could mm -hmm. plan further out. That's all. So, yeah. so do we want to move on deal. to our next yes. one, which is um, six to eight months before? Yep. So six to eight months is when you want to look and finally book that resort. Woo! That's Woo. the fun stuff. Um, so kind of deciding and making those decisions about where you're going to stay and then also buying tickets and making those decisions about what kind of tickets, how many days, um, all that type of stuff. So um, as far as the resorts go, if you're booking a package, at that point you would just need a $200 deposit if you're booking um, a package through Disney um, or through a travel agent. Either way would still be that same um, kind of disclaimer. They just do that $200 um, thing. Uh, Deposit. That's the word. Whew, that just like left my brain. Sorry. <laughs> um, now, if you're booking a room only, um, you will have to do pay the full amount up front. So just keep that in mind as you're looking to do no, that. Wait a minute. That, uh, no, that's not true because I book room only. And I but only I think isn't it different with APs or not? I could be wrong. I don't think I so. I think you still just pay a deposit. I'm pretty sure okay. it's one night's one night's worth. I'd have to look it up. Okay, so but it's not the two hundred dollars. I only have to pay a deposit. Just a deposit. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. but it may be more. So keep that in I mind. Think it might that be a the, percentage. The yeah. amount that you pay up front may depend on what type of booking you're doing. Yeah, yeah. We'll look that up later. Yeah, because I I want to make sure to tell you. But I know yeah. I book just rooms all the time, and I'm. You're right. It could be because I'm an AP, but I don't think it is. I, okay. I think it's just you pay a deposit. So it's and been a while since I've done room only. So I also <laughs> yeah. could have outdated information because it's been a couple. It's been Changes a couple years since I've done room only bookings. So <laughs> put a pin in that. We'll we'll revisit that in here in a bit, in a bit after we get some more clarification. Because um, I, I know the one that I'm doing. I'm going this next week, and I yeah. have paid a deposit on it, but I have not paid the balance. And I'm paying it when I arrive is when they charge you the full balance of it. Gotcha. So, okay, Gina's giving us some info. She said I just paid a deposit when I booked room only, and I'm not an AP. Okay, so it's some sort of a percentage of deposit for room only. So, yeah, um, 
let's see, Holly says, if you're an AP and booking a room, you pay a larger deposit than just the 200, which is what I did. So that, that checks out. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Community mom street community. You Thank you. We appreciate you. <laughs> See, this is, this is why we love the interactive and the chat and all the info you guys give us. It's super helpful. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's either going to be, if you've got a package that you're booking a $200 deposit, or if you're doing a room only booking, it's a percentage of your total, we believe, um, that is possibly more than that $200 mark, but either way it is a, a deposit that you make. Um, those are also, well, and, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, in <laughs> most cases you will, most people will need tickets at the same time. So we do recommend buying it as a package. That's a mm -hmm. better, a better way to go. Don't, you know, like, don't think like, oh, I could get discounted tickets somewhere. Like any discounts you get somewhere might be very small, very small yeah. discount. It's not really worth it right. to get them and, elsewhere. And a lot of the times we were talking about those discounts that Disney does offer, a lot of the times they offer them on packages. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for a room discount, you're probably going to have to do a package with your tickets anyway. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Occasionally they have room only discounts, but I don't see those nearly as frequently as I see package discounts. Yeah, they have had that like Disney Plus one that's been a, a discount for a while. They did like 25% off, I think, for that. Mm -hmm. And then annual pass holders often have some sort of room discount. So mm -hmm. just if you are an annual pass holder, if you if <laughs> there's not a lot out there because they haven't sold them in a long time. But if you are an annual pass holder, I would highly recommend you, if you don't see an annual pass holder discount, maybe just wait and see if they offer one soon. Usually they do every season though, they offer something, so. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind that those um, deposits um, will hold that room, but 30 days in advance, you will have to have that paid off. Um, and it is also refundable up to 30 days before your check-in date. So if something has to happen or you have to cancel or, or rebook a different time, different weeks, whatever that may be, um, you wanna make sure you do that before that 30 day mark so you don't have any penalties with that as well. And that is different if you have just a room only reservation because then you just pay the balance when you get there, but you'll have to purchase your tickets separately, right? So that is part of the, <laughs> the equation there. So mm -hmm. you won't have to pay till you like pay it off till you get there, but you have to pay a higher deposit and your tickets aren't included. So that's, that's that. Yeah. Again, so those package deals are probably, if you're looking for like easiest way to go about doing this, book yourself a package. <laughs> yes. Don't give yourself the Absolutely. headache of trying to keep yes. track of what's due when. I would no. say book yourself yeah. a package. Yep, 100%, I agree. Um, so after you've gotten your tickets um, and you've, you've booked your resort, then you it is time to make your park pass reservations, which I'm just, I always, when I was putting that on here, I was just like, just wait, we're gonna put it on there and then like they're gonna announce next week that they're gone or something. <laughs> Probably, but, hopefully, fingers crossed. I know, yeah. I know, that would be great. But because yeah. they, they did um, just announce that they took the um, parking fee away for mm -hmm. the resorts, which is great. So if you go back and listen to those resort episodes, just be aware they don't have the parking fee anymore, which is great. So right. yeah, um, we're happy about it, but now so great. our stuff is so, already outdated. outdated, which is, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so in case you didn't know, you do have to have a reservation at this moment that we speak of, which is January 12th, 2023. <laughs> um, you do have to have a park um, reservation in order to enter your first park of the day. Um, so that is something you want to do immediately after getting your ticket. So that way you can ensure that you have the park that you want on each day. Yeah. And I would say it's in the slower seasons, it's like not as critical to get it right away, but I would do it just so you don't forget because mm -hmm. if you forget and you arrive at the parks and you don't have a reservation and the park is like booked for the day, you can't get in, which right. is tragic. And I've seen it happen to families and mm -hmm. oh gosh, it's a terrible situation. So don't end up in that boat. Just go make your reservations. Even mm -hmm. if you decide later you have to change one and there's availability to do that, that's fine you know because you might when you go to make your dining reservations you're like oh I kind of want to be in this park at this time but at least you have something booked so you can go to a mm -hmm. park <laughs> and yeah. not be standing outside the gate looking in which is super yeah. sad or you could be like me who last trip I think I changed the order of parks we were doing three times 
<laughs> all because of because of the Halloween party dates. So oh, we yeah. were going in yeah. October, and that just messed up my whole world. So it's fine. <laughs> or, you, or you or you could be me, who is trying to meet up with Kirk, but he doesn't make plans until the last second. So I don't know what day I'm going to what parks next week. I have no idea. So. <laughs> Good. Well, he's only there Wednesday, Friday. So the other days you're you're free to do whatever you so choose. I don't know what he's doing. I have no idea. <laughs> we'll see. Yes, yes, exactly. So moral of the story, get those park reservations done. Um, if you do have a hopper, do keep in mind that you only have to have a reservation for the first park that you're going to that day. And then after that 2 p.m. time, you can hop to wherever else you are choosing to go after that um, but make sure that those are done and the one weird thing about doing your park pass reservations is they have to be done through the website the majority of things that we're going to talk about booking can be booked directly through the app but those park pass reservations have to be booked through the website um, so if you're already booking your your package and everything through the website just stay there <laughs> and it honestly the website does a fairly good job of guiding you to do that um so just look out for kind of their information about it and you should be able to just like click and go to that page um so to do it all at one time yep absolutely yeah i think it's weird that they haven't integrated with the app and that almost tells me like maybe they were just thinking it would be temporary because i think it's like a web mm -hmm. developer i'm like i wouldn't want to have to develop this for the app if i didn't absolutely have to right. so maybe there's hope maybe in that, they're they waiting put on the app i know they're waiting it out i mean it hasn't even it's been a year right since they started doing this at least it's been over more a, year. Than a year more than a year yeah almost two it's been a long I time think. come this spring Feels like a like lifetime. two years <laughs> It's been forever. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so speaking well, of, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to mention too that, you know, know that the day that you're booking is your starting park of the day, not the day that where you have to be all day unless you only have a one park per day ticket. So if you buy park hopper tickets, then after, is, is it still 2 p.m.? I know they yes. changed Disneyland to 11 a.m. Yes, Disneyland oh, just goodness. changed to 11 a.m. hopping. Disney World is still 2 p.m. for now. It's crazy. Again, Why? this is January they that? 12th, 2023. <laughs> Give it a few weeks and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, Katie says she tried to buy tickets on the app today and said you can't do that currently. That's interesting. Hmm. Maybe you can't do it on the app, but you can do it online. That could be. I or it's blocked out for the day know. you're trying to go. That's another possibility. I don't yeah. Know. It's hard to say. Maybe they, try they are it from dated a computer. tickets. Try it from a computer yeah. and see if that fixes it. And if not, then try tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. because, you know it's it could just be the day or the hour on that website on sometimes that website. yeah and that you can also one of the tricks i use with disney's website when it's acting up is i also go in like incognito mode mm -hmm. or like you know like private viewing mode and sometimes it just drops all the like cookies and cash and stuff that's mm -hmm. messing up whatever it is so you can always try that too because that sometimes that will allow you to book things easier if the website's yeah. giving you trouble yeah so. yeah um, so as, along with kind of searching on the app and other things that you can Google, researching restaurants is a good idea to start doing this about this. We're in the six to eight months before range. Um, start looking around where you want to eat. Um, see what's available in parks, see what's available at your resort, whatever. It you sounds are. so silly. It's like six months before you have a meal. Research where Decide you're going to have what it you and what have. you want to eat. <laughs> Which I'm totally happy to do because it's Disney, right. but it sounds like in real world it, yeah. language, it's like, yeah, I would never do that here, yeah. like in my like home life. Right. Six months from now, <laughs> what am I going to be hungry for? I feel like <laughs> my husband and I have had this conversation when we've been like looking at restaurants and we're like, I don't know what I'm going to be hungry for. Like, I know. Okay. I guess we'll just pick something and hope that it works. <laughs> I'll just find something on the menu that I want to eat. That's always what I say. I'm like, it will, as long yeah, as it I'll mostly it sounds work. good to most right. of the people in my party, right. I'll call it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So keep that, uh, keep looking 
or make sure you keep that in mind as you're looking, um, looking at, yeah, what's in parks. If you're going to be eating inside the parks, look at what's outside of the parks. If you've got a resort day or you're going to be doing, you know, hopping around resorts, whatever, or Disney Springs um, or downtown Disney, if you're on the Disneyland side. Um, so taking a look at kind of what all is available to you. Um, the app is helpful in that respect because the menus are on the app. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I would start with Google. And it's accurate. Yes. Yeah. I would start with Google and kind of look at your options. Um, and then from there, go to the Disney site to look at the menus just to like double check that, like Kate said, everyone in your party is going to be able to find something, especially if you're traveling with kids that may or may not be picky or have certain needs for their diets or what they like or don't like. Um, all of those things. Yeah. And I, I like using the app for that too, to browse, mm -hmm. like, cause you can, you can do a pull down and just do like dining and then mm -hmm. you can kind of click around the park. Cause if you're like, I don't know where the, where these restaurants are and what park that's really helpful cause it's on the map. And then you mm -hmm. can be like, okay, I'm going to Hollywood studios. Now here I am in the map. I can like click on all the different restaurants and see what I like. Yes. And so that's helpful. And Holly said, uh, also research your second and third choices, just in case I agree, mm -hmm. like you might not be able to get your first choice. So having right. backups is definitely important when you do that. Make a little list of one, two, three. I do that too. So right. that's a good tip. Well, and deciding to, are you going to do a table service restaurant? Are you going to, you know, try to get a reservation at a sit down or are you just going to do quick service? Um, you know, those are also important decisions that you have to make at that point. So that way, you know, here in a minute, we're going to talk about dining reservations. That way you have an idea of what you're, what you're going for when it gets to that point. Um, uh, Allie says, all I know is my love language is Topolino's breakfast. Me too, sister. <laughs> Me too. That's all I ever yes. want to eat at is Topolino's. Oh, That's so good. We, <laughs> we got that reservation in April of 2021 when we went and it was like, I literally stalked so the good. website every day, all day. <laughs> and we got like an 8am reservation and I was like, what planet am I living on that this just happened? <laughs> amazing <laughs> and it's like it a good time was too. amazing it's oh, and we like got there early and they seated like they were like where do you guys want to sit and we like got to pick what table we sat at <laughs> what? like we so we were like right by the window like it was <sighs> mm, yes it was lovely it was that's lovely. so great that's so great yeah, so now I'm like that. spoiled and I'm like I want to go back but I it's never going to be the same because we were also there during like social distancing so like we couldn't get super close to the characters but there was also like yeah. no one at either table next to us so we also oh, could get great. like really great Photos. pictures with like yeah you know staged correct like in the right angles and it, it was just it was just I lovely love and that. I have really great pictures of my kids out on that balcony with like the skyliner in the background and just yeah yeah. Can you tell that we love Topolinos? <laughs> if you're wondering, it's in the Riviera. It's in the Riviera uh, Resort on the top floor, and it's gorgeous, and the character breakfast, and the food is really out of this world. Sometimes it's character mm -hmm. breakfast, the food is terrible, but this the, the yeah. food is so good. So yes. that's, a, that's a really popular yes. one, too, to try and get. Um, I did have a couple questions. I had um, Hillary, who's going to Disney World soon, and so am I on Sunday, so I Yay. might see you there. Um, I am, she really wants to go to Space 220. Any advice? And people um, are telling her to sit at the bar so much better. I agree. The lounge. Yep. If you don't have littles, that, that's like maybe not an option. But um, yeah. that is the, well, everything I've heard is like the food is like not so great, but the experience is fun. So yes. maybe go for like dessert or an appetizer or like and i believe even if you do the lounge you still get like the elevator experience and everything so yeah, keep that in there. mind all, um they yeah. also do have a limited walk-up list um so if you don't want to sit at the bar but you want to do space 220 rope drop space 220 <laughs> which sounds ridiculous yeah. but go <laughs> there <laughs> <laughs> but go there go there first to get your name added to their list and then cross your fingers. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, um, gosh, I have so many comments. So I'm trying to catch up for you yeah, guys. So fine. yes, Allie, um, you do need to figure out Topolinos. It's a really hard one to get. Yeah. It's a really it's hard one to get. Um, but totally. Worth oh it. yeah. And the mouse dining app, which we have mentioned, I feel like we've mentioned this before on how to get really, mm -hmm. on our Q&A episode, we talked about how to get really mm -hmm. hard dining reservations, and one of them is there's a mouse dining 
app that can kind of give you alerts. You really have to be on the ball, though, when those alerts go off telling mm -hmm. you things. And so anybody who's not familiar with that app, it will basically, if you haven't gotten a reservation, you really want one, you can put in like the date, the restaurant and the date and time like you kind of want to eat. And they'll alert you if a reservation opens up. But you again, you have to like book it like the second it opens up because like probably hundreds of other people's also got alerted at the same time, alerted at the same time. So that's why it's not always a foolproof plan. So Yes, exactly. You got to pretty much stock the website 24 seven for those ones yeah. if you want them. Uh, no shame in rope dropping food. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I mean, think about what your priorities are. We've talked a lot about that as well and prioritizing. If Space 220 is the top of your list, that's what I would do, you know? Yeah. Um, if it's not, then, oh, well, move on, find something else because there's also a lot of really other great food options. Yes. At Epcot. Yes. So. 100%. I would say other it's more for the experience well. than the food. Yes. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so let's pause um, our food talk here. Or unless, do we have more comments and questions coming in on your side? that is not about food. Okay. I have a question that we can answer really <laughs> quickly. Are either of us DVC clients or do you recommend from me, you, and Mickey too? Um, I am... I rent DVC points, but I am not an owner um, just because I'm not a huge fan of timeshares personally. Um, but that's everybody's makes their own call about that. So, and Jackie is not an owner either. I don't know if you've ever rented DVC either. I have not. I so. hope to soon, but I have not. <laughs> and we'll put that on your bucket list. Rent DVC. <laughs> <laughs> get you somewhere but yes, exactly. um, but i i love re renting dvc and we did do a lot of talk about that in our first deluxe ep resort episode we talked all about how to rent dvc um very easy process but there are some risks involved so episode um, nine episode nine <laughs> thank you look at you i've, I've got it pulled number. up because i knew we were going to be referring back to episodes yeah. we had talked about stuff before so yes the beginning I love of how you plan I just, <laughs> it's like my love language and I just appreciate it so much. This is why this works love so you. well. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh yes, Allie, I got this down. Yes. So the beginning of episode nine um, on our podcast or our YouTube is where you can find the information that we did talk about with DVC and owning and renting and how that works. Um, and we did talk about it also during the deluxe episodes because we did give some price comparisons if you're interested yes. in that. Yes, yes. So let's let's wrap up six to eight months because we got a lot of other months to go on. And we don't want to be here for hours and hours and hours. So we gotta go. <laughs> we're going to keep moving. Um, the last one that we had there is um, set up flight alerts. And so um, I maybe we should talk about that a little bit more. I do a little yes. bit more flying than Jackie. Um, something that I do and I actually currently have like four or five of them set up is you can use uh, Google Flights. You can use Kayak. There's a couple other websites that do it where basically it allows you to track prices and they'll alert you if the price has gone up or gone down for your specific like date and where mm -hmm. you're flying to. Sometimes you can even add multiple airports if you have a couple mm -hmm. nearby you. Um, and so I do that. I set that up, you know, six to eight months before and I just start watching the fares. And if I can catch it when it's really low and it noted, like I noticed that it's dropped, I just go buy it that day. Mm -hmm. Saves me hundreds of dollars to do it that way. Yeah. And I never just like go and just buy it that day because it rarely is the best price sometimes, but rarely. So mm -hmm. that just set up your fare alerts. They're free to do yeah. and um, you'll feel like an expert in no time. <laughs> Yeah. Allie is giving us a tip from her experience. Google Flights is the best. She says don't use Hopper, whatever you do. So apparently she's had some okay. bad experiences there. So Google Flights does seem to be the most well-rounded when it comes to searching flight times and yeah. and things too, from what I have found. Um, and I don't fly very often. So <laughs> I trust include... other people. It doesn't always include like Southwest, like Southwest, I think like just mm. doesn't have their stuff in the same algorithm as yeah. all the other airlines. So you might have to check that separately, but a lot of the major airlines are included into Google flights and it's, um, I've used it so many times it's, mm -hmm. it's helped a lot and you can easily go in and turn off the alerts after you don't need it anymore. Either <laughs> it's just like a toggle switch or a trash can delete it. So, yeah. um, that's really, yeah. Allie and, Beth is also yes. saying, yes, had a bad experience with Hopper. I second that. Okay. Don't, don't go to Hopper. Thank you. I've never used that. So I wouldn't even know. I, but. I've set up to monitor. I've never done much with it, but 
Um, Kristen is also saying I use Google Flights um, to book travel for people at work, and I swear by it. It will tell you Southwest flights, just not the prices for Southwest. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So I always just kind of just check Southwest every once in a while and be like, maybe they have something. They, it's never cheap right. for us because we're in the Northwest, Pacific Northwest. Yeah. It's just never the cheapest. But right. um, and Christina says the aviation industry is wild lately. It really is. I'm just praying for my flight this weekend. <laughs> All kinds yeah. of stuff going on out there. It's been that way for a while, though. I don't think I've had... I've had, like, one flight in the last 12 months that wasn't canceled or delayed. So... Yeah. And I fly a lot. So... Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying. Be yeah. prepared. Right. Which we talked um, about in one... Which episode did we talk about that one in? I, I don't know that Why? one. <laughs> oh, the flying... Wasn't that the first episode? Mm. Oh, no. Where'd it go? Second? Where'd it go? I don't Where'd know. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh, Music speed, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, traveling on points is also a good way to save money. Yep. So if you have a favorite airline and you travel a lot, that's a great way to do it. Oh, getting to Disney is episode five. Thank you. <laughs> it was somewhere. I was like, where did it go? It disappeared on me for a moment there. Um, okay. Anyway, so let's recap. So we just talked six to eight months before um, booking your resort, buying your tickets, making your park pass reservations, researching restaurants, and setting up flight alerts. So that is your checklist for that time frame, be six to eight months before your trip. Okay, so would we move on to 60 days before? This is such a critical yes. one. Yes, 60, 60 days. days before, which sounds like a random time before, but with Disney, this is a really big one because the very first thing you've got to make sure you're ready is the morning of 60 days before your trip, make your dining reservations. We talked a lot about some of those that are hard to get. Character breakfasts especially are hard to get. Um, there are certain other restaurants you'll just kind of figure it out as you go. Unfortunately, there's no grand list of these ones are easy to get, these ones are hard to get. It just really depends. Yeah. Um, but being flexible, having, I think um, Holly mentioned, having two or three options for each park, um, being flexible with your times as much as you can. So and being ready for that. Yeah, it, it is um, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, yes. 3 a.m. Pacific Time. So either stay up really late or work, wake up really early, <laughs> depending on where you're at, I suppose. Yeah. Um, or just and wake up say, for a few minutes. Occasionally they do open things early. And my advice to you is have... You, so you can do this on both the app through your My Disney Experience and the website through your My Disney Experience. Same login, again, like we've talked about. I would have both of them ready, and I would start refreshing like 20, 15 to 20 minutes before stuff is supposed to open. Because on occasion, I have found things that have opened early. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, who knows? Could yeah. have been a glitch. It's weird. They just drop it, like, mm -hmm. especially when they have, like, a new restaurant and they're opening it up. It seems yes. like it's really random when they yes. drop that. You just yep. never, and the know. other, yep. The other thing is when you're looking for certain times of the day, um, for whatever reason, in the way that their app and their website works, um, don't use the generic morning, afternoon, evening. I don't remember exactly what they say. On the top, as you're looking for times, do the hour by hour breakfast, and lunch dinner i think, I think is breakfast, what it is lunch, yes dinner. So i was thinking i was like that's not right <laughs> like, <"Wait a> minute. <laughs> um so don't use those generic ones um you're more likely to have times pop up if you're using the individual hour times across the top of your screen yep yep and we we talked more about this in our, i think our q a episode about it was that the one we yes, talked about getting top dining right. reservations so if yes. you we won't get in the weeds too much here because we really, it's a whole episode in itself on how to book your dining reservations, but mm -hmm. making sure that you have your list ready because you've already kind of researched your restaurants and made your list, have it ready to go be there on before time, not even on time, before time. <laughs> yeah. And again, I always, I always use the like incognito or private viewing mode because the website will sometimes just glitch if you've, it has the information cache. So um, yep. I tend to do that as well. Um, but make your dining reservation 60 days out, set it up all your alerts so you don't forget because mm -hmm. it's harder to get those reservations after that, um, yep. that date. So, yep, exactly. Yep. Um, so let's, should we keep going? Cause we yeah. got lots, lots. So, um, 
next on the list would be start walking regularly. And I put it at 60 days out because you might not actually start doing it till like 30 days out <laughs> or maybe three days before like me sometimes. <laughs> But especially if you've got littles, especially if you're not used to moving a lot, if walking is not part of your everyday life, it's going mm -hmm. to make your trip so much better. Um, if you just start walking just a little bit, you know, even a couple mm -hmm. times a week is better. Um, yep. Get your body moving because otherwise it's a huge shock to your system. You walk 10 to 14 miles per day at Disney World and like 7 to 10 in Disneyland. Um, it's, it's, you don't usually walk that much in your everyday life. I'd say for most people. So right, right. start walking, do yourself a favor. <laughs> yeah. It'll be good for your health anyway. So <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we wanted to throw that in there just to put it on your radar to make sure that that's something you're considering as you're prepping not only your plans and everything, but also prepping yourself and your body. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because we want you to have a relaxed vacation, not one where you're crippled right. in pain and popping Advil or leave. Exactly. Exactly. Every 10 seconds. <laughs> yes. Don't um, do that. That's really yeah, bad don't, for you. Don't. don't <laughs> just walk you got this just you walk. can do it <laughs> um so also at 60 days out you're gonna want to look at ordering magic bands um so whether that is the older style of the magic band twos or magic band plus um looking on again you're gonna be able to book those through the website on my disney experience or the disney world website or disneyland depending on wherever you're headed um, so take a look at what they've got. Now, the one thing about trying to get your magic bands is you may have to just kind of look at the website periodically for a couple weeks around that 60 day mark because their, their, um, inventory can come in, come and go on there. So if there's a certain character you're looking for, a certain color you want, and you don't see it, wait a bit and see, um, but you definitely want to give yourself plenty of time if you're going to have those shipped to your house, because especially oh, yeah. over the last six to nine months, they've been very delayed shipping Magic Bands out. I think it's gotten better now that we're further away from the Magic Band Plus release. But initially, it was really bad. <laughs> so make it's sure still, you give plenty of time. Bad. Is it? <laughs> it's, 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 I think their shipping time is getting better. But I, the last three to four times I have ordered Magic Bands, I have not received them. And they've gotten lost in the mail. And I've had to like call everybody and then they have you like call USPS to make sure they haven't gotten it. And if they haven't got it, you have to send proof back to them. It, I am an expert at figuring <laughs> out how to reorder my magic bands because they oh, got no. lost and it's happened every single time. I don't know That's if it's just me or what. So crazy. I've given up. I just buy them at the parks because I'm like, it's not worth it. It's <laughs> Which just, it's is not. an option if you don't <laughs> see one that you like online or yeah. you've seen one on a live on TikTok or an Instagram post or wherever and you're like, I want that one and you see yeah. that it's only available in the parks, that is an option for you as well. Just make sure you have a backup for your park entry, either using your uh, mobile wallet or like an Apple Watch, or if you aren't comfortable doing that, you can see guest relations to get like a card. So just make sure you're, yeah. you're ready for that. Well, and it, you, they do have discounted ones before you arrive too. So you do save money if they actually get to you. <laughs> they, they, they're great, but they just, yeah. So that's why I put it, I, I was like, let's put it 60 days out. So even though yeah. you don't have to order it 60 days out, you have a little bit more time because of those long shipping times, because of maybe mm -hmm. design changes, you don't find something you like quite then. And because it might get lost, <laughs> you have to make, might have to reorder it. Just give yourself lots of time so you don't have yeah. that stress like a couple of days before your vacation, like I've done yeah. many times. And they will, <laughs> if, you, if you don't order them or don't receive them early enough, they will have options that you can send like and have them at, at the desk, at the front desk of your resort if you're staying on property. Um, yeah. So that is an, an option too. Just take a look at the information on your own individual Disney website under that magic band. And again, it's going to guide you to do that. So when you log in to check on your plans and you've done your reservations for dining, if you scroll down the page a little bit further, it's going to talk yeah. about magic bands. So just yeah. kind of go through that process through there. And um, make sure you read all the information <laughs> so you know what you need to do. <laughs> and you also do not have to order a magic band if you mm -hmm. already own one. So just keep yes. that in mind if you have one from a previous trip that's not too long. I'd say the mm -hmm. battery lasts about a year-ish, maybe a little yes. bit longer depending. 
But if you've gone on a trip even within the past year and you don't, you're like, I don't want to spend the money or I'm good with what I have. You don't have to order any. Like, I didn't order any for this trip I'm going on. It has like a big like exclamation point. Like, you didn't order anything. I'm like, I'm, I'm I know. good. <laughs> like, I have like yeah. 20. I'm good. Yeah. And I will say a lot of the magic bands, they're the, even the older styles, like their batteries last. I've used ones yeah. for five, six years and they've still yes. been fine. It's not yeah, guaranteed. So keep that in mind as well. <laughs> but well, worst I've case used scenario, you, you, can, you can use your phone until you maybe get yes. another magic band. So like, it's like not the end of the world. If you have your right. phone with you, it's not going to, yeah. yeah. So, and someone asked earlier on my side of the chat about getting your park ticket on an Apple watch. All you have to do is from your, my Disney experience app, you go to your tickets and passes, and then you click on whichever one you want to load. It will give you the option to, I don't remember the exact terminology, but it'll say like add to wallet and then you'll be able to add it to your wallet and then it's done. As long as your wallet syncs from your watch to your phone, you're good to go. That's so great. I don't have an Apple yes. watch, so that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And the same thing goes if you're going to just use your phone, all you have to do is put it in your wallet um, on your phone and then you literally just touch your phone to the tap style and it'll go for you that way. Yeah. And I have a question over here. Um, this they uh maggie i think maggie yes do you know when the annual season tickets will be out we don't know we have we have no idea disney kind of is like releasing them whenever they feel like it and it goes really fast it seems when they do mm -hmm. um so we hope that it'll come back because there's a lot of people that would really like annual passes but they do have ones for florida residents i believe yes. but if, if you're not a florida resident i don't know um I just keep renewing mine so I don't lose it. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot knows? of people are in that boat too. So yeah, we wish yeah. we knew. And if we find mm. out, we will post and let you all know, but we don't. Know. Yes. <laughs> Disneyland, Disneyland's magic key holders. They have said that there'll be several times a year that they'll release a few, like a, po yeah. a pocket of <laughs> right. magic keys, which will be chaos on those days. Yeah. And if you well, see it, just immediately go get them. Cause yeah, that's what Connor just long. said. Disneyland recently had like a 24 hour time period where they, released some and then they took them oh, back off and it was it was crazy chaos on that Pe website people <laughs> and people in lines at the park like at the at the ticket booth outside the park i was oh. there when that happened and just oh seeing the lines of people that waited for hours yeah. and then like some of them just still didn't get it because oh. they, they ran out i'm like right. there has right. to be a better way <laughs> It's you like the pigment so. buckets all over again. Oh, you would think so, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Sadly, we don't know when they're coming back. We hope soon, but that's all we can give you for now. So, yeah, yeah. So let's see. We had on 60 days out, we've had making dining reservations, start walking regularly, order your magic bands. And the other one would be book your flight or uh, map route if driving of course like i said with booking flight you'll just you'll have been watching it this time hopefully by now and um but i would say right around 75 days is usually when it's the lowest price so it might be even a little bit further out than 60 but definitely by 60 days out i would be like it's time to really make sure we've got something especially if you're traveling in a very busy time of year because then your options start getting very limited mm -hmm. and you end up paying a lot <laughs> so yeah make sure you got a ticket by yeah. 60 and if, days out and if you're driving around that time you want to start to think about okay what time am i leaving what time am i going to get there how many stops am i going to have to take we drive from ohio so we're very good at this um <laughs> and you those yeah. of you who have been here know <laughs> that, that i love driving my van down to disney um <laughs> it's jackie's favorite pastime it is yes um, so we, um, we tend to like to, because we drive overnight, we tend to like to make sure that we can stop in bigger cities. So that way we know if we're stopping late in the evening to get gas or to do a break. Um, we know that it's going to be a, a more well lit area with a lot around us, you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, and then just also planning out like meals, if you're going to be stopping, if you're worried about construction or traffic or, you know, all that good stuff. Um, we like to map our route out to make sure that we are as prepared as we can possibly be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this still reminds me, like, sometimes if you rely on, you know, uh, Google Maps or your Apple Maps or whatever, and sometimes it will take you in a weird place, like a weird way to go. Yes. It happened to me several times. We ended up, like, in the middle of nowhere with no cell phone reception, and we're like, where are we? <laughs> 
I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like it's happening less and less as the technology gets better. Yeah. It's like more tries to route you towards major routes versus like right. the fastest way to get there, which is mm-hmm. like some logging road in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Right. But, um, you know, it's just good double to just map out your route. Just, yeah. just you know, double check that you know which roads you need to be going on. That way, if your map does take you another way, you can go, wait a minute. What's happening? Why am I going this way? Oh, there's a giant traffic jam. That's why I'm going that way. Okay. Yes. You know, yes. those types of things are helpful. So yeah. that's kind of your overview for 60 days um, to make sure that you've got all of those done before your trip. Um, so now hopping a month, a month ahead to 30 days before. So these are, we're getting into more still important but also kind of fun kind of fun stuff too um (laughs) so first and foremost you want to arrange any sort of ground transportation or rental cars that you may need um so thinking about how if you're flying how am i going to get from the airport to my resort um am i going to take mirrors am i going to take the sunshine Sunshine flyer Am I going to Uber or Lyft? Am I going to do a rental car? You know, all those kind of options. You want to make sure that you kind of have an idea of what you're going to be doing. Some of those you would want to book at that point if you're going to be booking like one of those, um, one of the shuttles or one of those types of um, transportations. Um, But if not, you're going to want to start to look at how much Lyfts and Ubers cost and all that kind of stuff. So just take a look at all of that info. We went over all of that in an episode... Uh, episode number <laughs> I can't remember but we did go over rental cars and transportation and all the options and episode number five thank you so if you <laughs> if you'd like to go back and get more details on how to do that um check out episode five because we do get into the weeds of what everything costs and all of your options and weighing the different ones so that's yeah. that's a great place to head if you want more information about that so. Yeah. Um, Mike's got some information in my chat that he's mentioning other 60 day things that you can do. Booking droid and lightsaber experiences, Biffy Bofty Boutique, dessert parties. Oh, yeah. Yes. All those extras you would want to kind of do around that 60 day mark um, if that's something you're interested in as well. So those kind of go hand in hand with those dining reservations, any sort of extras that you're looking to do as well. Yeah. Yep. I think it's like the things I'm going to do at Disney that are activities, eating, uh, you know, all the special stuff. 60 days is what you want to know. So Yes. Yes, exactly. 60 days out. Perfect. Okay. So hopping back to 30 days now. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. So that, this is like one of the, the kind of fun things. And this one obviously is super optional. So this is like, if you want to, is something I, I like to do is plan out outfits for me and or my family, depending on who's going. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes coordinated, you can do matching t-shirts if you want, you can do Disney bounding, your littles can wear costumes only up till age 14, like then they, they changes, you have to do more Disney bounding after that. <laughs> um, you can just have everybody, you, or you can just plan your personal outfits, even if you're not like doing any sort of matching outfits or anything, you just want like, I just need like a couple of Disney shirts and some comfortable shorts or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I usually like to start planning it at least a month before. Sometimes mm-hmm. I do wave more because i'm crazy because you can't and help like, it <laughs> it's exciting know, and you're so like fun. ooh, and it just like will pop into your head like oh, that's a really good idea that's what i could wear <laughs> <laughs> i had fun planning the ones for this next week i'm super excited to do some i'm Disney excited to see week. all of your bounds <laughs> i love so, it you've yeah. got some new yeah. ones in the works we've seen some I of your did. other really great ones but you've got some new ones I know. Well, Christmas and my birthday, I was like, yeah. I just asked for a lot of clothes. So yeah. here we are. That's, that's <laughs> so it'd be great. But yeah, yes, planning perfect. your outfits. Um, that's And you can get a lot of them if you're like, I don't know how to, I'm feeling overwhelmed by that. There's lots of great ones that are, you know, Pinterest is your is a good friend for planning mm-hmm. stuff. And also um, there's lots of Etsy sellers. They make really cute outfits and, and clothes and matching things. So um, there's lots of resources for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So um, next thing on 30 days before would be submitting a room request. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, we've talked about this before in our resort episodes. Um, I usually have a, I have a touring plan subscription, which is not, not very much. I think it's Disney is like $10 a year and Disney world is like 14 something, maybe 15 mm-hmm. something. It doesn't cost that much for an entire year's worth of stuff, but they will, you can actually use their room finder maps and you can like, um, see the view that you would get from your room based on what category you booked 
-hmm. and then you can say i would like a room like this one and then they will like actually like fax on a request for you to try to get the room it's not foolproof it doesn't always work cast members do the best they can with requests but they can't always do it and my last two didn't really work that well so just remember it's always a request (laughs) never never demand <laughs> yeah, kind if, to the cast members it, right <laughs> and if you're not using touring plans you can do this directly through your the same places you've been kind of all along through that my disney experience um you can do it through now that i'm second guessing this though i think you can do it through the app and the website both um for that one um it'll give you some options of where you can request um if you have certain buildings or if you want to be ground level or close to transportation or close to amenities you know all those kind of options are on there for you um so put those in and again these are requests um, but you also will yeah. complete your check-in at that time as well. They want to know, um, are, do you need an early check-in? Are you someone who is going to be arriving at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m.? <laughs> you know, yeah. you want to make sure that you put that in there. Um, and again, they try their best to accommodate. It's not always a given, um, but they do try their best. Um, the last two times that we've requested early check-ins, we got fairly early check-ins they weren't exactly on time but they were like within an hour of what we had requested yeah and i mean their check-in time is around like three or four p.m usually so that's what you that's what yeah i think it's four for dvc okay so you can it's a so never expect an early room especially like me if you have an early flight you're coming in from a red eye like itis plan if I'm going to need to change, I'm probably going to have to do it in the bathroom or the lobby or something, you know, right. like it's just, it is what it is, you know, and, um, but they'll hold your luggage until your room's yep. ready. Um, so you don't have to yep. worry about that. You can still go to the parks and have fun until you're ready to come back. Um, but yeah, submitting room request is something you can do again, optional. Don't have to do it at all if you don't want to. Yep. Um, and then but I would make uh, sure even if you're not doing room requests that you do that online check-in um, because that will give you the ability to sign up for your alerts whenever your room is ready. Um, yes. So they'll do text message alerts or email alerts to make sure that you know um, when your room is ready. And that's like the best part because they update you along the way. They're like, they do. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> or it's not quite ready. Or, or yeah, like, not oh. quite ready yet. And you're like, oh, okay, that's fine. Thanks for the info. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I, I did, you know, I, I was thinking of like making this, I was like, should we put it 30 days before? Should we put it two weeks before? Like, when do you check in? Cause you really, you can check in like any of those times and yeah. it doesn't really matter that much when you do it. So we do have like submit room requests. And then on under the next one, we have complete your online check-in, but yeah. you could do it any of that time. I think mm-hmm. that we just put it later, just like make sure you've done your online check-in. Yes. You can also add a credit card at that time too, for like your room incidental charges mm-hmm. and stuff too. That's and you may have that. updates too, as flights change and things change or, you know, we had my, when we were getting ready to leave, my husband's work schedule changed. And so we had to leave later than we thought this last trip. So, you know, things change. So just making sure you can update that all the way up until a couple of days before your, your trip, as far as like what time you want to check in and any other requests. So that's something just to kind of keep in mind as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so one of the other things I tend to do about 30 days out is um, create daily park plans. And we, I think Jackie and I do this a little bit differently. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I, I, like I said, I use that touring plans app a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I find that really helpful for planning and they can even mark which ones are Genie Plus. So you can go back and like, say I got a Genie Plus time for this and it'll like reorganize your day Mm -hmm. and optimize it. So I tend to build touring plans for my days in the parks when I'm with my family. When I'm by myself, I do whatever I feel like. But, <laughs> um, but what what do you do, Jackie? Well, how do you? So I do plans? it a, a kind of a couple different ways, depending on yeah who's going and who and what parks we're going to. Um, but actually, the way that I arrange it is most easily explained. If you go to my Etsy shop, I've actually got planners on there that are laid out the way that I kind of think through things. Um, so I think about yeah, what rides we're going to do and food and that kind of thing. So I kind of lay it all out in a one big long chart, um, so to speak, and kind of go from there. Um, I tend to use the Disney app mostly. Um, I don't typically use touring plans just because I'm comfortable using the Disney app and I feel like I know my way around it really well. Um, So I tend to use that and I just have a lot of random ride wait time knowledge and Genie Plus knowledge. So I feel like I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, 
but it really just depends, you know, and every trip is a little bit different. And we've talked a little bit about prioritizing and making those lists and things like that. So those are kind of all things that play into how is this I the kind one you're of talking about. Yes, like these it ones? is. Yeah. Okay. I was like trying to find it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so those are on my Etsy shop, which the link is up in there. Um, I also do some consulting for trip planning and itinerary planning. So if that's something that you're like, I don't know what to do, send me a message. I will be happy to help you. So that's, that is my favorite part. <laughs> well, yeah. And even got like the Genie Plus plans. Yep. That's we've fun. got, I've got Genie Plus plans. I've got all sorts of stuff on there. So, um, that's kind of my wheelhouse of making itineraries and what to do and when to go where and kind of fitting it all into your day. So that's super fun. Yeah. I think it's, there's just so many ways to plan, but I feel like you mm-hmm. can, it can, I would highly recommend you have a plan. However you decide to plan. Yes. Have a plan. But then keep it flexible. Mm -hmm. Recognize that it's going to change. You're not going to be probably check everything off your list necessarily. We always we have always talked about prioritizing people's, you know, what your family really wants to do. Everybody picking some one one to two rides or attractions Mm -hmm. that they really want to see. Um, But make a plan, but keep it flexible that you're not just like we have to we have to do this this way because like that you're on vacation. Like, don't forget. (laughs) It's supposed to be enjoyable. (laughs) Yep. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so create your plans. That's yes, so 30 that, days out. So yep, that kind of rounds out 30 ahead. days. <laughs> um, so again, arranging transportation or rental cars, planning outfits if you choose to, um, submitting room requests, um, and then creating your kind of daily park plan as well. Um, the other thing I will mention about creating your daily park plan is you can prioritize um, rides in the Disney app as well. So that is something that I would look at doing as well as making oh, yeah, kind yeah. of your overall plan. Um, you can prioritize rides when you make your plan in the app. Um, and that will be helpful if you choose to do Genie Plus down the, the line too. Yeah, that's great. I've never done that, but maybe I will this time. Maybe you will see it. Use that use Jackie's method. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Like I'm not going to do that. I'm going I'm no, to read what... my giant imaginary book and forget about everything else. And then I'm going to be on your live, and I'm going to be like, "Hey, what do you need? I'm going to book it for you." <laughs> oh no, it's true, but it's sad that it's true. <laughs> but I love you for it, and I love doing it, so it works out. <laughs> it works out. It's good. Oh my goodness! Oh my All right, so hopping a few weeks forward here about two weeks before is where we're gonna live here for a bit um two weeks before just a few things make sure that you are thinking ahead arranging grocery delivery or making a list if you um are someone who's gonna need to go grocery shopping or want some food or snacks or whatever you want in your room um thinking about how you're gonna make that happen um you want to do that about two weeks ahead of time yeah, we've we've talked about this in an episode as well, um, kind of like planning for your trip and um, the extensive of all the all the options for grocery delivery and things like yes. that. Um, so I'm trying to remember which episode that was because it tagged uh, it onto the end of one of them. I is it packing? think it's the packing, packing one, which is episode two. Episode two. That's when we talk about grocery delivery. If you'd like <laughs> to go back and listen to, or watch that one. Um, <laughs> But also I, I, something I do as well, especially as a solo traveler is I will get um, non-perishable food that I can put in my suitcase that I know I'm going to consume while I'm there and then not have to bring back with me. So I actually do my grocery shopping here before I go. I know that you do that too, but like yes. you shop before you go because you put everything in the world in your van. But, <laughs> but I, I do that. And then I have room in my suitcase for souvenirs on the way back because I just have mm-hmm. like that spaces for food. So um, I do that sometimes with my kids too. If I know there's specific mm-hmm. kind of snacks that I might not be able to find somewhere, especially if you have dietary restrictions for your yes. kids. Um, you can make sure that that two week point, you know, is where you can maybe start getting some non-perishable food and squirreling it away for your packing. So. Yeah. And we do about, yeah, two to four weeks in advance. Typically we start looking because we are those people who we eat breakfast in the room and then we take lunches in with us typically. Um, so yeah. we will just look at our local grocery store for anything non-perishable that we're going to need that might be on sale. Um, so my husband's really great at shopping the ads for our local grocery store so he will find nice. us uh, yeah he's wonderful at it and I say so yes great. please thank you <laughs> um, so he will kind of um, look through those weekly and see oh hey we need this for our trip let me go ahead and grab it now so we kind of two to four weeks uh, in advance kind of start to do that so that way we can pack all that with us um, and then 
about two weeks out, anything else that we haven't grabbed, we'll go ahead and grab at that point in time as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, yep. Grocery delivery. There's a ton more details in that episode too. So if you, if you need more details on groceries, um, another thing, two weeks before, um, we already touched on this 30 days before, cause you can really do it at almost any time after that 60 day mark is complete online check-in. Mm-hmm. This just makes sure that you have done it um so that you're good to go and they can notify you about your room there's some people that say like don't do online check-in because then you might not get the room request that you submitted and i'm like i haven't seen the be truth to that so i would say complete online check-in so that you can be notified about your room and go there as soon as possible so and if something advice. comes up or the room you're in is not going to work for a legitimate reason go to the front desk because yes. i've seen similar videos where people are like don't do online check-in just go and check in at the front desk you don't know what kind of line you're going to be looking at. You no. don't know how long that may take. Um, I really would suggest doing that that online check-in to expedite that process for you. And then if you do have an issue, then you can go down and talk to the cast members at the front desk from there. Yeah, I have done that in the past. I had, I've had a couple issues, but one, one issue one time is like I had requested a specific, like not a specific view, but I was like, I had spec- in a certain category and like the view we got was so disappointing for the category we'd booked in. Mm-hmm. And I just went downstairs and I was like, is there anything else in this category that you can give me virtually anywhere? Cause this is just, my kids were really sad. They were looking forward to a view of the Skyliner. We had like sold them on that. And it was yeah. like, we didn't get anything and they did they they're like it might be an hour or two i was like great that's fine that's and fine. of course right. be very gracious if you ever in that situation mm-hmm. you know be understanding if they can't accommodate you sometimes it is what it is but yeah. i also had a very weird situation this is a little side sorry i'm gonna do a kirk rabbit trail so <laughs> i had a very, i had a really weird situation as a solo traveler where i went and i booked in a moderate i think it was port orleans riverside Mm-hmm. And I went in my room and it was like somebody had been in there um, after they'd cleaned and were like oh. hanging out in the room. So there was I trash in the trash can. About that. Yeah. There was like dirty feet, like like shoe marks on the bed. And there were like some of the cabinets were open and it's clear somebody had been in my room and it freaked oh. me out. And it's never happened to me before, but it did yeah. then. And I was like, I almost thought it was like, maybe I just need a different room. Like what happened here? I still don't yeah. know. I asked them to mouse keeping to come and clean it or like touch up those spots because i'm like this is weird it's probably like a maintenance guy just like hanging out in the room on his break or whatever but like that's not okay but no like they i'm sure they have standards against that and something happened and it was not okay so if that ever happens to you i don't know as a solo traveler i probably should have just like switched rooms at that point so you know, just be safe. Yes. Don't do what I did. Let it be a cautionary tale. <laughs> do, do as we say, not as we do. No. <laughs> just in that one instance. Normally, we're pretty good about that. But yeah, be yeah. very kind. And that's never happened to me and before. Just yeah. there, all of these are requests. Unless yeah. you're in a specific, a preferred room and you don't get a preferred room, that's a different story. You know, so things like that, just yes. be aware of and make sure that you're yeah. getting what you truly paid for. Because I've heard some stories before where someone ended up in a standard room when they had paid for preferred. Um, yeah. So it was like, okay, either move me or give me the difference back, you know, <laughs> one or the other yeah. Yeah. would be, yeah. would be great. So just, yeah, again, be kind. Yeah, it and, does happen once in a while because yes. people make mistakes and that's all. It's just and humans. computers are not foolproof mistakes. when they enter things nope. into their system and all of that. So exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yes, complete that online check-in and, or adjust it as needed two weeks out. So you make sure that your check-in process is smooth sailing. Yes. And then the last thing we have for two weeks out would be um, purchase and or gather up items you need for your trip. So, you know, sometimes I'm almost like, gosh, we should maybe put that a little earlier the way things are these days with shipping. Because I'm like, I get all my stuff from Amazon when I'm preparing for a trip. And I feel like everything's been delayed because of all the stuff yeah. going on in the world. Yeah. But. So depending on what you need, um, <laughs> it could be something as simple as ponchos or handheld fans or you know, extra band-aids, whatever it is that you know that you're going to need, just be prepared that by two weeks out, you should be getting the last of your stuff for that. Yeah. And, um, we do both Jackie and I have, um, Amazon storefronts links in our bios. So of like lists of stuff we love to take to the parks, um, Mm -hmm. recommendations for products that we have used and we love. So if you're ever, 
um, like, I don't know what I might need for the parks. We did an episode where we kind of covered it all as well. Mm -hmm. But um, this is that that is a link directly to those things that you can find um, to help you out with your trip, especially a fan that I really love that is like, I think Jackie ended up getting one. I did. I bought one. (laughs) (laughs) And And we loved it because when we went in October, it was unseasonably warm for October <laughs> and I was so glad that I was like oh I'll just buy one just in case we we don't we weren't typically fan people but that fan is wonderful so yeah, it's great if you yeah, need a handheld like a little fan bear, it's and adorable it so and it's lovely my kids made me draw eyeballs on mine before we <laughs> oh took gosh. it they were like it needs eyes that. it can't see I was like okay <laughs> yes eyes. so I took a sharpie and drew eyes on mine before we left for our trip <laughs> oh my gosh I love that <laughs> Oh, that's so great. Um, yeah, it's it's a fan, but it also will charge your phone. So it's a power bank and it is a flashlight. It's like all three in one. It's like $14. It's, and it's a powerful fan with like two yeah. speeds. It's great. Yeah. It's like one of, it's the best fan I've ever purchased for Disney. So it's great. It's yes. on my list. <laughs> yes. I forgot that it was a flashlight though. And I had it in my fanny pack at one point in time. And I was like, <laughs> Where is that? What is like, I like got on a like a dark ride, and I was like, "What is happening?" <laughs> it's like, "Oh, right, it, it's a light." Yeah. It <laughs> saved me once when I was um, going live, and like my fuel rods had like died, and I was oh, in no. line for something, and I needed to charge my phone, and I was like, mm. "Oh, right, my fan is a power bank." <laughs> yeah, it's like a backup. Um, really quick, um, Shelly Paul asked, "What is the difference between standard and preferred?" So it depends on the resort. Um, and you can find that information really on the Disney site. A lot of the times it's just location based. Um, preferred rooms tend to be closer to whatever the big draw is. If it's the pool, if it's the the main building, those types of things. Sometimes preferred they have, like, rooms nice views. come with a view. Yep, that's exactly what I was yeah. going to say. Yeah. So. So, sorry. Just no, you're good. <laughs> we're we're <laughs> always on the same brainwave. It's fine. Um, no. So those are kind of the differences. Subtle, but worth it if you're paying the, dif- the difference to have that preferred room. Yeah. Holly says that even if temps aren't high, if you have anxiety or motion sickness, a fan can be a lifesaver. Yes. I have asked somebody who suffers from motion sickness a hundred percent. Sometimes just getting that air moving around you can just make all the difference. So, yeah. yep. Yeah. So again, if you're looking for things that you may need, check out our Amazon storefronts for kind of our list of things that we've used and then go from there. <laughs> okay. So to recap, we have can you read it? Because I can't read yeah, it. Yeah, I can't. I was like, are you actually going to be able to read <laughs> like, that? Like that? That's impressive. Nope. <laughs> so two, two weeks before arranging for grocery delivery or making a list for groceries, completing or adjusting your online check-in as needed, and purchasing and gathering any last-minute items that are needed for your trip. Those are your two week before checklist items. Yes. And I have one question before we move on to one week before. Um, our lounge fly is a practical bag for the park. Um, I think they're cute for the skeptical functionality, which is a great question. Um, I even have one for demonstration. <laughs> it is, it's small. <laughs> yes. So, so it, it, it really depends. depends. <laughs> yep. So like this is, for example, this is my water bottle. This is my bag. Mm-hmm. It's, I can't fit my water bottle in most lounge flies. So I end yeah. up having to just take like a plastic reuse. I, I reuse it, but I use mm-hmm. a plastic water bottle to fit in there and I can fit the majority of my stuff in there. As long yeah. as it's just me traveling, I can, but it's small yeah. and everything's kind of jammed in there. So yeah, I would say as a solo bag for just you, probably fairly practical. Um, yeah. If you're someone that's going to be going with kids, you're going to need either a second bag or, or a bigger bag. Yeah. Um, So what we, yeah, what we will do is, um, I have done the lounge fly. I prefer to do a fanny pack personally for myself because I know that I'm going to have to have a backpack with the stuff for my kids in it. And then I just keep the fanny pack on me that has all of the valuables and things that are irreplaceable, all of our credit cards, phones, those types of things. And then our bag with all of the kids like extra clothes and stuff or snacks or whatever just stays in the stroller. Yeah. And if you don't have a stroller, if you have older kids or solo, I, I, I can do a lounge fly for myself. If my kids all carry their own stuff, they don't mm-hmm. have lounge flies cause <laughs> no <laughs> price wise, but they have little like over the shoulder bags that they mm-hmm. have that are like really like $10 or something on Amazon. They were cheap, mm-hmm. but they work so well. They're very lightweight. They carry their own water, a sweater, if it's going to get cold out and a fan, you know, like they have their own little supplies and mm-hmm. they carry them every day. Like your yeah. older kids can carry their own bags, people. 
Don't tell you that so, they can't. So, so moral of the story, lounge flies, yes and no, depending on your situation. Yeah. Oh, and I will say some older kids, obviously with special needs, that doesn't apply. So just, you know, right. my little, like, older kids, most older kids can yes. carry their bags. I will say yes. that. So, um, yes. and then, and then you can probably do a lounge fly, but yes, you'll, it'll, you'll need everything in miniature size if you carry a lot of stuff. Cause it's just not much space. <laughs> right. So, right. Yep. Okay. So perfect. should we move to, um, one week before? Yes. We're getting close to the trip. Woo. I know. <laughs> so let's talk one week before, um, biggest thing at this point would be all related to packing. So checking the weather and seeing what the weather is going to look like, but also remembering weather can change. Um, so mm -hmm. starting to look ahead to see temperatures to see, I mean, it's Florida. It's, if you're going to Disney, it's going to rain Disneyland. You're going to want to look at the chances of rain and all that happy stuff out in Cali. It's been rainy there recently, like mm -hmm. really rainy. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. So start to pay attention to that. Um, because that may, you may have to revisit some of those outfits that you planned. <laughs> yes. You know, a couple, a couple weeks ago at our plan here. Um, but make sure that you're looking at what the temperatures are going to be like and kind of the, that chance of rain to make sure that you're prepared for that as well. Yeah. And especially in, um, these months, I'd say in the summertime, you can just bet that it's going to be hot. So it's just going to be hot. It just is. Yep. Like, it'd be shocking if it was cold. But in like these winter months, it's really a toss up. Like yeah. my trip, like half of it is cold and the other half is like in the 80s. And I was like, yeah. OK, it's just kind of you just don't know. So right. just be prepared for all circumstances, maybe uh, pack layers so mm -hmm. that you can have options no matter what the, the weather is like. Um, yeah, Cassie also says carry an umbrella in your bag every day for sure. I like to do a poncho. It's, yep. you know, everybody's Something got their for rain. Yeah. Something for rain. Yes. A hundred percent. Cause it, Absolutely. in Florida, it likely will rain most days, yes. not yeah. all days, but most yes. days. Exactly. <laughs> and that week out before, uh, as you're checking that weather forecast, start to pack. Um, so making sure that you yeah. are starting to, to lay out outfits or whatever you choose to do kind of your method. Um, again, we've talked a lot about packing on previous episodes, episode two, we talked about our different methods that we use to pack things like that. So check that out. If that's, if you're like, I need a better system, we've got you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially with littles, that Ziploc path packing method that both you yep. and I use. Yep. That is a winner. Is a I used it for Christmas and my kiddos clothes are like, my oldest are like almost too big to put them in the way that I have been. And now I have That's to like, so sad. I know. Get the jumbo ones, my friend. I you know. I'm get the bigger have bags. To, have to, but I'm so <laughs> they have jumbo Ziploc bags. <laughs> I'm so sad I know. about it. It's so hard. But it's okay. <laughs> My daughter will be there for a while. Okay. She's tiny, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, start to do that packing a week out um, to make sure that you, again, and that's a good double check for you to make sure that you have everything that you need. Um, you know, use packing lists. Again, I've got a packing list on my Etsy shop. If you're like, I don't know what all I need. I've got a very comprehensive packing list on my Etsy shop, um, that you can take a look at as well. If that's something that you need assistance with. I was just looking for it. Sorry, I'm like I'm trying to oh, find no, it. Oh, no, you're fine. It's on there. I promise. It's there somewhere. It might be um, hiding. I was struggling with my Etsy shop earlier as I was trying to get the <laughs> our checklist up. It, yeah. It was a whole thing. Um, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. The um, says nobody. Like, are Crocs okay for the parks? Yes. As our good friend Kirk from Walrus Carp will tell you, who just recently ran a marathon in Crocs. A, ten, a 10 <laughs> he wears Crocs. 10K in Crocs. 10K <laughs> marathon in Crocs. He uh, wears Crocs almost every day in the parks and he loves them. So he's, yeah. and they are, unless they are the fuzzy ones, they're waterproof. So that's a, a win too. So this, um, yeah. That's a, that's a win too. I don't wear Crocs in the parks, but I do wear flip-flops that are kind of Croc-like. So mm -hmm. I would say as long as, you know, no, you know, your feet, it's hard to recommend yeah. shoes because some people's feet are like, no, I can't do that. Right. So do what's comfortable for your feet. I'd say that yeah. would be. And I was surprised this last trip in October, I wore Crocs for the first time because I had not, uh, Kirk convinced me and I had not bought Crocs <laughs> before. And then I ended up with Haunted Mansion Crocs because they were just too cute. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm just going to do it. Well, actually my lovely friend Gina gifted them to me because I said that Aww. I wanted them and she was like, here you go. And I was like, thank you. Um, they were the most comfortable shoe that I wore all week. I was shocked. 
Because I did not think they would be, but can't. they were. They're so, I hate the way they look. But I bet if I <laughs> got Croc flip point. flops, I probably would be okay with that. Like, they do have flip flops. So. I know. I they think have, that like, might be my next step. Ones. My yeah. step towards well, you're, you're also very particular about your bounds. So, like, I feel like yes. all the way from head to toe. So, like, I get that. I also yeah, wore, and I like, just I just like flip flops. So yeah, you know it's yeah, thing. and that's fair. Right. And I and I would also say rotate your shoes. Don't don't yeah. like make sure that you have two or three. If you're going for more than a couple of days, two or three pairs of shoes that you can rotate through, um, because even if they're comfortable to wear, they're gonna irritate your feet. So yeah. when you're yeah. packing, hundred percent plan for that. Get more than one pair of shoes for sure, mm-hmm. and especially if you are wearing shoes shoes and they're not waterproof. Ali was mentioning. She thinks everybody should carry like a dollar pair of, pair of flip-flops for when those rainstorms come. That's not a horrible idea if you mm-hmm. can wear those and they're comfortable for your feet. I think yeah. that's a good idea um, if your shoes are not already waterproof. But mm-hmm. also, if you're not if you're choosing to bring shoes that are not waterproof, make sure you've got more than one pair because mm-hmm. they will get wet and you do not want to wear wet shoes. And they take day. forever yeah. to dry yeah. out in the, the Florida humidity. <sighs> <laughs> so Maybe keep that in mind that. too it may, t- it may take a full 24 hours for your shoes to be completely dry yes so yeah but if that's the only thing you can wear because that's what's comfortable for your feet sometimes you just got to make accommodations and go with it so we get that yeah yeah um, Allie says vessies are great waterproof shoes and super comfy so there are definitely tons of options out there if you're looking for waterproof crocs are one vessies all sorts of other options that are out there so definitely look into that i guess yeah Valentini says Birkenstock all rubber sandals are good for the parks. I've never tried those, so that yeah, that's. I've heard I feel that. like I'd need to wear socks with them because I'm from the Pacific Northwest. That's what we do here. So, <laughs> oh my god, I don't, but I most people it. do. So yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so packing, checking the weather a week before, and also purchasing photo packages. Although this has somewhat changed depending on it's just if you what want photos doing. from PhotoPass photographers then you want the photo package. If you are just like, I just want my ride photos, otherwise I'll take it with my own phone or camera, um, then you don't necessarily need the photo package by, because mm-hmm. um, they just it now include um, the ride photos at Disney World. The ride photos are mm-hmm. included with Genie Plus. Yes. But at Disneyland, all of your photos are included with Genie Plus because yes. we're just trying to make it as confusing as possible. <laughs> Why couldn't they make it the same in both? Oh. I'm just saying, what is happening here? This is, yep. <laughs> it's already so confusing. Well, and not only Sorry. that, but people who reported the new change that just happened with Disney World, a lot of them didn't clarify that it's just your attraction photos that are included. <laughs> it was just photos. They're like, photos are now included. Yeah. And it's like, like, yay. Oh, that's not quite right. Nope. <laughs> So, yes, your attraction photos are now included with your Genie Plus. Um, But if you want any other photo pass pictures, if you want pictures on Main Street, if you want pictures, um, you know, in front of any of the other icons, the Tree of Life or Tower of Terror or the magic shots, magic shots, pictures with lightsabers and Galaxy's Edge, any of that type of stuff, you still want to make sure you purchase that photo package. Um, And you do want to do it in advance because if you wait to do it, less than three days before your trip Mm -hmm. um the price goes up yep Yep. so So make a decision that's what we say one week out that gives you a couple days to make sure you've gotten it all sorted out yeah Um, um the other thing to keep in mind is if you're so i've heard and if there are travel agents here you guys can correct me my travel agent has always told me that they wait to add the photo pass because you cannot modify a package deal once you have added that to it for whatever reason the disney site will not let you um so i would wait wait to do (laughs) it until that week out don't book it when you book your whole package unless it's a thousand percent foolproof you know you're not going to be making any changes to your trip yep yep that's good advice and that's why it is one week before and not one month before exactly 60 days exactly Yeah. So to recap our one week before, we're getting really close to yes. our trip now. <laughs> yes. We're checking the weather forecast. We're beginning our packing process and we are looking into purchasing photo packages at least three days in advance. So we get that little tiny bit of a discount that they offer. Yes. 
And so then we get to move to four to six days before, which is like, sounds like almost like a week. (laughs) Not quite a week, a little less than a week. Um, So in that range, sorry, my computer just like freaked out on me. There we go. In that range, um, you are going to want to make sure that you have your My Disney Experience app downloaded. Um, At this point, you hopefully have already been on the app. Um, but if you haven't, if you've been using the website, you want to make sure you have that app ready on your phone because you will need it for lots of things once you're actually in the parks. Um, and then also downloading the, um, Disney play app. If you are wanting to utilize any of the 50th statue stuff, if you're wanting to do bounty hunting in galaxy's edge with your magic band plus, um, they also have trivia games. If you're wanting to do the DuckTales scavenger hunt at Epcot, you need it for that. Lots of things on that Disney Play app. Um, yeah, and you can use it in Disneyland. I know we're mostly talking about Disney World for this, but if you want to use it in Disneyland, you can get um, Esmeralda and Fortune Red, the two um, free vending machines for fortunes. You can get one per day up to 10 days in a row. Using the Disney Play app, you can get a free fortune. So a lot of people don't know that, and they think, oh, I have to put a quarter in or whatever. So use that for that. So you can get your free souvenir. So. I have to read this. Sorry. Aside, <laughs> Allie Beth said Jackie and Kate are the adultier adults I've been looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, I love you. That's a compliment, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. For the organ- organized... Yes. She said that she needs us well. to plan to plan her trips for her. <laughs> I think Jackie will do that for you. I can't even yes, plan I will. my own because I'm so yes, busy. I so yes, I will. Jackie do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just send them my way. I'll help you out. <laughs> um, so yes, making sure that you've got your My Disney Experience and the Disney Play app um, downloaded, updated, because I know also that Play Disney app and My Disney Experience need to be running on the most recent updates for your app version. So make sure you've got that going for you as well. Yes. Um, so you got your apps downloaded and then you're just kind of doing a final check then for um, the weather, but also park hours because they do adjust park hours all the way up till even like the day before your trip, they might adjust them. Sometimes they do after hours events. Uh, sometimes they have cast member appreciation things. Sometimes they have weather or stuff that is just, you know, they, they, they do change the park hours every once in a while. So just kind of being aware of what adjustments are happening. So if you need to make any last minute changes, you can, or just mm-hmm. know about them. Yeah. And also I would continue to, to double check those kind of as you get closer to your trip. And even like, the night before you go to a park the next day, I would also double check your park hours. I've been on trips before where they've extended park hours because just crowds have been higher than anticipated. Um, yeah. And so I've literally been on trips where I checked it one day and then the next day it was like, oh, Magic Kingdom is open two extra hours now, you know? So it does happen, yeah. especially if you're there during summer or busy months. So make sure that you're checking those as well. As you're I usually going get through. I usually gro- like groan a little bit when they extend the hours because I know then it's gonna be busy because I'm like they don't do that usually if it's not gonna be right. super busy. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm yeah. like it's a catch twenty two. Uh, okay. It's like oh yay more time, but oh that means that crowds are really busy. Oh <laughs> yeah, they know you're gonna need to spend more time mm-hmm. standing in line, so they do that to accommodate so you can do more during your day and spend yeah. more time in the parks. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so yeah, checking those park hours and also double checking the weather again, like we said, kind of monitor that as yeah. you get closer, um, again, monitoring that kind of even day of day, day before day of making sure that you're aware of kind of what the forecast is, is guessing and kind especially of include with, that in your plans. Yeah. Especially hurricane season, you know, mm-hmm. cause you just be aware of any hurricanes headed that way and see if you might need to make adjustments to your plans. If it yeah. looks like it's something that you shouldn't be traveling for. So that's a good time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, And along kind of with those park hours and whether finalizing your daily park plans, again, we talked about this, putting stuff into the app, if that's your way to go, making a written out list, um, using link in bio, my Etsy (laughs) plans can help you as well. Um, So any of that kind of stuff that you, however you want to plan, just making sure you're finalizing that and adjusting as needed. Mm -hmm. And then um, one thing I also love, uh, tend to do, both of us do this, not just me, (laughs) um, was uh, 
four to six days before you can pair or update or also charge your Magic Band Plus because the new Magic Bands you actually physically have to plug in to charge. Mm -hmm. I usually like to just make sure they're all ready to go. At the same time, I also start charging all of my like portable chargers and stuff Mm -hmm. because I have, you know, all the power banks and stuff that maybe have been sitting in your closet because you only pull them out when you go to Disney. (laughs) Um, It's a good time to just start charging everything, making sure everything's connected. Um, yeah. And I will say with the magic band plus we have found, like I did this two days before we left and then I needed another update when we got to our resort. So (laughs) keep in mind that they may, you know, they may need to update again, but you want to make sure that you have paired them to your phone and that you have done any updates that they need. Um, that also being said, the charge may or may not last that entire length. So be prepared to also have to charge them. Again, once you get there, um, the Magic Band Pluses will last you a full day in the parks, but you're going to want to make sure you charge them every night so that way you have them for the full day in the parks. Yeah. And how, how do you update them, Jackie? Yeah. So <laughs> the way that you do that is on that My Disney Experience app that we've been talking about. Um, so you will go into using the bottom right-hand corner little I call it a hamburger button, the three little lines. Um, (laughs) You want to click that and go to your magic bands from there. um, And it walks you through that process um, right on the app. Um, There's different settings you can get into. And we, you know, we won't kind of get into all of that. If that's something you guys want to see in the future, we're happy to kind of showcase that for you guys. But um, it is all on that app that you want to go through. Um, And also make sure like I did all four of ours when I did it. Um, and just paired them all to my phone because I knew we'd be together the entire time. But you also, if you've got older kids that have their own devices or you're traveling with several adults, you want to make sure you're coordinating all of that because they are Bluetooth receivers as well. Right. Great. Thank you. Yeah. I don't Lem- know if I've ever done that. So I'm like, oh. have I updated mine? You may so I'm going to do that to- later. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how well, do I we, do that, Jackie? So we actually had to update my husband's at the front desk because his wasn't working on our door when we went to check in yeah. in October. Um, and so, like, all the other three of ours were working. So we, like, took it down. She's like, well, we'll update it. And they updated it. And we re- repaired it to my phone. And then all of a sudden it worked. It's like, huh, okay, that was weird. But sure, that's fine. <laughs> no. Okay. Just yeah, like so everything else, got to update things. So. Yes. Yep. Um, and Lem says, bring a power strip for charging if you've got lots of magic bands and other devices. And he also said, turn off magic bands after charging them before you pack them away. So yes, that oh, is I didn't excellent. do that last time. I didn't know why good turn it off. <laughs> look at all these Thanks, things Lem. we're teaching, Kate. Wow, look, I'm learning. Because <laughs> I've used the ones that are not magic bands yeah. plus for There's so There's a button long, on the back know? that you so... can, like on the, like the puck center on the back that you can turn it off and on. Thanks, Lem, for that. Appreciate that. I'll be turning my off next time. It'll be great. Update it, pair it, turn it off. Got it. <laughs> um, so that's four to six days before. Again, to recap, um, here, I'm going to let you read it. I'll yep. Hold it up. So four to six days before, you're going to want to download My Disney Experience. That's what that MDE stands for um, in the Disney Play app. Um, or update or, you know, whatever you need to do with those. Um, Do a final check of park hours and weather and finalize your daily park plans and pair, update, charge your Magic Band Plus. So then we arrive at our one day before our trip, which is where I'm at right now. And apparently I'm going to go charge my magic band but <laughs> well, you're you're a little closer to the four to six days before I know. You got time i'm like still. i got you're a good. little i got i got time it's fine. yeah it's you're fine. good you're good um, uh yes so then we have one um one day before is yep. if you're First flying and foremost yep check in for yep. that flight yep usually it's 24 hours before you want to check in for your flight um I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Most of you know how to do that. If you're flying Southwest, make sure you do it exactly 24 hours before so that you can actually have a chance of getting a decent seat. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, do make sure you do uh, check in as usually earlier is better, especially if they ha- if you have the really cheap saver seats. Um, sometimes they'll assign it. It depends on the airline, but sometimes if you if you check in sooner, you might get a better seat assigned. So you know, just do it as um, at the twenty four hour mark is a good a good way to go about it. Yep. 
Um, and also in that time frame, you're going to want to cancel or adjust any unneeded dining reservations. Um, so there are penalties if you don't cancel those um, dining reservations. Um, they have updated it now. You have up to like two hours before your reservation time to cancel it without any penalties. But you're going to want to look at it 24 hours before to make sure you know what you're doing, especially if you're trying yeah. to adjust and get something different. Um, you know, that's something that you're going to want to make sure you have that all finalized within the 24 hours before you go. Yep, absolutely. And then <clears throat> the last thing, the most important thing I would say is take a deep breath and enjoy your trip because <sighs> you've made it. <laughs> you're you're mm -hmm. going on your trip. And I think so often we get on our Disney trip and then we start to feel the pressure of getting the, you know, making sure we get places on time, making sure we get Genie Plus Resort, like Lightning Lanes booked and we make sure we get all the things and that everybody gets everywhere. All the, Just take a deep breath mm -hmm. and remember that this is a vacation and you're supposed to enjoy it. And if you're not, make an adjustment to relax a little bit. <laughs> yes. And if you missed our episode last week on self-care and you're someone who stresses, myself included, Take a listen to that episode. <laughs> yeah. We did include some ways that you can take care of yourself on vacation, some small ways, some bigger ways that you can really just truly um, enjoy your time in the parks, especially as a parent, maybe with littles that you, um, it's harder to do that because you're watching out for your kids. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, enjoy, exactly. enjoy your trip. Take a deep breath, relax, yes. enjoy. Cause it's hard, it's stressful sometimes traveling and yes. you don't, you know, just it's, it's supposed to be fun. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and hopefully this list will have helped you be ready and make sure that you have done everything that needs to be done before you go. Um, again, we mentioned at the beginning, but I'll mention it again in case some of you weren't there. This checklist is available on my Etsy shop. Um, it will show that it costs five dollars because Etsy won't let me put things on there for free but if you use the promo code MOMSTREET it will get you your free download of this checklist. Um, we put it on Etsy so that way you'd have a good quality list to use um, so that way it would uh, help you for your trip. So uh, take a look at that if that's something that you want to use. Download print off and let us know if there's something that you're like oh you guys forgot this let us know we're happy to add it on and yeah, make sure that it's updated. Yes, exactly. We are happy to do so. And um, so then for next week, since obviously we've been talking about I'm headed over to Disney yes. World in a matter of well, days. It's still days, but it feels like hours. Um, <laughs> I, You're like, ah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be in Disney World next week, and it is um, Epcot's Festival of the Arts. So we thought it would be fun to do an episode of I will be in the park, and Jackie will be my lovely assistant narrating virtually everything. Um, and we will show you <laughs> fun things to do with kids and yourself at Festival of the Arts. So we know that sometimes with these festivals, you can feel like, oh, it's just all this really fancy food or like music. Maybe kids aren't interested in that, but there is so much for kids to do. So we're going to talk about that and I'll show you live from yeah. Epcot. Which will be and really fun. note for that, for those of you that like to join us week to week, we will be at a different time next week. Yes. Um, because Kate will be in the parks and we want to utilize the ability for her to still walk around and see things, um, we will be coming to you 7.30 Eastern next week. Um, yeah. So mental note. A little note, bit earlier. Yes. Yep. And we will put it in Discord and remind you and all of that good stuff. So if you're not in our Discord, link in bio. Make sure you join not our Discord, the Discord, Pocket Fam Discord. <laughs> It's all of ours. I, I feel a little bit of ownership to it. I do a lot on that. Oh, it's so. ours. It's all of ours. <laughs> so be sure to join that. Um, that way you can get updates on when our podcasts are available, when our YouTubes are available. Um, I'll put the information for that checklist and the link for it as well on there too. So you guys can find it and download it um, and have that um, template to use as you are planning your trips. Um, and also in our bio, you can find our lovely merch store. We've got these cute, adorable little mom street holographic stickers. We've got t-shirts, we've got sweatshirts, all that kind of stuff is in our merch shop, which is on Kate's website. Again, link in bio or DisneyCicerone.com. You can find all of that there as well. Yes. So yeah, it's, um, this was such a fun episode. Everybody's saying thank you for it. And I, um, 
just really loved getting to think, step back and think big picture about all of this stuff. And, you know, I feel like we always, anybody who's a Disney fan usually, and people know that, you know, Disney, they're just like, help me plan my trip. Well, this is also a resource then you can share with Mm -hmm. them as well. Um, that they are like, I have this great checklist for you, or I have this great episode with this checklist for you um, <laughs> of things. So well, hopefully Absolutely. it was great. I shouldn't assume. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was great, but I, don't I know, think it so. was great too. I think the people are pleased, Kate, <laughs> have confidence in our ability. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't want to be like, that sounded like I was bragging or something. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> like I wasn't trying to do that. <laughs> but yes, if you are someone who is planning, getting ready to plan, know someone else who is planning, feel free, send that checklist out. Again, we are at Mom Street are here just to help people plan their trips and make their trips better. And we want to make sure that we can do that for everyone. Um, So be sure to share that out to anyone who you know may need it. And um, Ali, thanks for the reminder. She said it was, she was time for her to read more of my book and then sleep. And (laughs) I have my copy here. So if you haven't heard of it already you probably have but it's a glimpse of the magic finding ourselves in the disney story and it's basically a collection of writings about how we connect to the disney parks and also sprinkled with some obscure disney history as well and it's um it's it's some it's one that you can just kind of savor there's it's shorter chapters so that's not an intense read because i feel like everybody needs just like less to do so it's it's an easy read (laughs) it is it's very very good if you are a fan of kate's content you will love this book because it reads just like her content and it's just so lovely. And like I've told you before and I've told anyone who will listen, I just, when I read it, I just hear Kate's voice in my head and it's just so soothing to just like hear that. So (laughs) it's very, it's very nice. (laughs) I need to order my physical copy of it. (laughs) I still like, it's on my list and I'll I'll get to it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. And um, Lem, Magic Bands and Trash Can says can confirm. Um, And Robbie, you got your signature card. Yay. Yes. Because I I will, I have cards available at DisneySisterOne.com that are called bookmark book plates that I can actually sign and then mail to you that you can stick in the front since I it is like one that you it's printed on Amazon and shipped direct to you so I it's harder for me to sign it and obviously you might not be bringing your book to the parks if you see me in the parks I get that so um that's a way that I can kind of sign your book for you um but oh, yeah Paul so like said I started reading mine today <laughs> oh yay oh great <laughs> I'm so I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying it and I um yeah it's been it's been really a joy and I am working on my next book as well that's not a non-fiction yay. it'll be a fiction story about live streamers in the Disney parks so hey buckle up it's, it's gonna be a it's gonna <laughs> be a thing <laughs> be a, a bumpy ride <laughs> Lems, you're bringing your book to see when I see me in the parks. Okay, I will sign it for you, Lem. I'm still trying to decide. I think you're supposed to like cross off your name when you sign it in person. Like you're supposed to cross off your name on the title page and then sign oh. your own. And I have to like, I feel weird crossing out my name. <laughs> so I haven't done it yet. I'm like, I should though, right? It's what you're supposed to do. I don't That's know how funny. to sign things, people. It's like just, I had to practice my signature because I don't. <laughs> mom i'm like i have one hand gonna, and i'm like you're gonna be sitting scribble. on the plane just like practicing on a notebook <laughs> it's like my name a hundred times the person next to me is like i want to uh, change seats right like oh uh, <laughs> not sure what's going on over here <laughs> oh lem you wrote splash today put it in a plastic bag to a ziploc bag it'll fit in a ziploc bag don't don't get it all wet i'll bring you another copy if you need one it'll be fine <laughs> I love it. <laughs> anyway, that was yeah, a fun anyway. little rabbit hole, rabbit trail, but yes. Yeah. So that's available. If you're wondering where to get that it is, um, Amazon's probably your best bet. You can get mm-hmm. this visual available digital and also I finally got my copy. It took me forever Yay. to get mine. Everybody else is getting them fast, but I took, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm in the Pacific Northwest and things Crazy. don't get to me, but yeah. um, you can yes. get on Amazon. It's also on Barnes and Noble, Apple Books, Kobo and Google Play. So it's available all, and the all link places, is so. in your bio for the Amazon version, right? It's for all of them, actually, because oh. Linktree does a great thing where you can click on it and then it'll show you all the places you can get it, which is great. Love so, it. yeah, perfect. Can buy yeah, so any yeah. of the stuff that we've mentioned in this episode, um, Amazon storefront stuff or merch or Kate's book or any of that, check our bios. It's all there. <laughs> or if you can't yeah. find it, yeah. send us a message. You guys know where to find us. So, yes, yeah. 
And we would love to see you on Discord if you're not already part of our Pocket Fam Discord. That link is in our bios as well. Um, it's where we do a lot of our chatting and hanging out and have a community together. And that's really yeah. what this is all about for us. It's not just us, you know, giving you Disney tips, which we do love, but we mostly <laughs> love talking with you and yeah. having a community with you. So um, thank Absolutely. you guys for hanging out with us and being part of the Mom Street community. You guys are amazing and we really appreciate all of your, I want to say faces, but I don't see your faces. All of your little names <laughs> that pop up names. make me so happy. <laughs> little, little profile yes. pictures, like, make yes. me happy. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. And remember, next week we are at 7.30 Eastern. Um, and we will hopefully see you all then. At Epcot. Yay! <laughs> great. Have a great night, guys. Have, have a wonderful night. We'll see ya. Bye. <laughs>